about uh, then half Taft Hartley. Then he says down the bottom of the memorandum that Wirtz feels that we ought to go in and half Taft Hartley in the beginning. Now, I I rather feel that we would be foolish to uh, wait ten days and let all this slush fund organize and let labor come in and let them have their meeting and raise five million dollars and get the line thrown. Everybody mad as hell. The public worked up and all the labor unions passing resolutions and locals and then come in and say we're going to invoke Taft Hartley. If we're going to invoke it because we've got to have it for the war, we've got to have it for the war, period. And that comes first and we're going to do the only thing we need to do. That's invoke it now. But we've got to have labor to agree that they won't make us come back at December the 20th. We can come back the first of the year. Uh, as soon as Congress gets back here anyway, and in the meantime, we can get our best experts to look at the, And I think I can just have to tell General Electric, God damn it, you've got to behave a little bit, give a little bit. Goldberg said that one time at Hanford back there sometime or other, Kennedy told the Labor Department that they had to tell General Electric that you just can't be a good contractor for a good government without ever listening, budging an inch, and said they did uh, move a little, uh, and that he didn't think they'd ever move, but they did in this instance. In 80 days, we might get them to move. In any event, I said to Meany yesterday that McNamara said he couldn't go but a week or 10 days, and Meany seemed to understand it, and I rather believe Meany and them would feel uh, uh, no more better towards us if we went before they had all this organization and afterwards. Uh, I wanted to see what was behind your suggestion that we go on before. Just exactly the things that you mentioned. Uh, well, would you take, would you then touch your bases with Reynolds and see what he did about to see if they'll give a little bit? We don't think they will. And if they won't, we can, you can tell Meany that you tried one more time pursuant to my instructions to make General Electric move, that they wouldn't move. You got to have helicopters. And some of them say five days, some say a week, some say ten days. But it, if he gets in his crowd, gets all worked up here, and then the president moves in, why well, it'll be bad for the elections and make it look bad. And if we got a law, we ought to use it to either use it or not use it. And that uh, we can't do it though if we have to call all Congress back and, and go have a strike on December the 20th that they got to go over till the 3rd or 4th, whenever they come back here in January, another 10 days. And uh, we, we'll we put this 10 days on the first of the strike, go on that now instead of the last of the strike. Uh, but he's got to make that union go, go uh, give us an extension so we can have for January. And I'm going to tell McNamara to go on and get his affidavits right. I'm going to tell Nick Katzenbach, and maybe we ought to meet over here about, uh, I don't guess, I don't want to ruin your day, but if you either have somebody, uh, if you if you have troubles, uh, 11, let's say uh, 11, uh, 11 o'clock, if that would be all right. Uh, let's see, I'll either be there or have Jim Reynolds there. Don't, don't mess up your day now. You just have be sh all I want to be sure of as far as you're concerned. A, this is your recommendation well, as, as Califano recommends it. Is that right? That, that, that was. I want to add one thing. Uh, I've been talking with Jim Reynolds this morning about it, and I've got to check out one other possibility. Uh, he says he thinks there's some reason to believe that the uh, labor people, if we gave them a very short two or three days of strike, might then voluntarily come back at our request, uh, either uh, on a across the, uh, either on an all plant basis or on a uh, on a selective basis. Now, if I find that they do that in response to an appeal to uh, uh, to their patriotism and so on and so forth, I'd want to review this uh, uh, the, uh, this this uh, position as a, the, which was mine as of last night. What would you think of that? I'd be guided by your judgment. Right. You haven't been wrong any time that I know of, and I just carefully think it over. And and uh, I read the other arguments, 
And I've talked to McNamara this morning. He 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 thinks that we ought to preserve collective bargaining for two weeks. But I don't think Mimi really thinks that, and I don't really think that I think it. And I think your argument is a whole lot better than McNamara's and Califano's. And I think Bob thinks so. When I tell him, he says, "Well, I, that's a side I hadn't looked at." And what I say is this: that the the president of the United States has one consideration. That is, there's a war on. And soldiers can't be denied when there is a war on. Make a damn who it is. Now, uh, we're sorry General Electric won't move, and we're sorry we have to have a strike, but if we're going to have to have one, I can't tolerate one. Right. And the only law available to me is to tap tartly, and the war effort's got to go on. And the soldiers, I can't let a soldier say out here he won't fight. I can't let the, these boys down here that burn up a draft card, I have to send them to jail. And I can't say that this, so I've just got to use this. Then he says uh, that uh, I've got to find some way in 80 days to hit General Electric quietly a little bit where they'll give some. Who says that, Arthur? Well, uh, I, I agree to that. That's uh, what Ramini says, that he, if they'd move a little yesterday, that, that's he all said, right. I think, I he said, it's their pride. That's and said, I'm not going to let them uh, down. He said, I'm going to put five million in it. If they buy as much as they do from us, we can't get them to raise one little finger. Uh, well, then we can put them out of business. They're sons correct. of bitches anyway. That's though. correct. And it's just, it's, uh, this is one of the few cases I've ever run into where it was a, where it is a matter of principle instead of a matter of money. Will you look at it with, with the Reynolds and your foal, and I will tell the Attorney General to start preparing on it. Then uh, I will have a meeting and say, would it be better, what time would it be better at 11? I've got a meeting at 11.30. Could it be 11.45? Would that be better for any representative of the Labor Department? Oh, uh, well, uh, that gives you a little time. If it's all right for Jim. Uh, yes, sir. Oh, yeah. All right, 11.45. I'll uh -huh. see that he is. Could I have you one minute on, uh, yes, on one other question? Want, yeah. on, the, uh, on the appropriation for the poverty thing, just to inquire as to whether you have uh, have been in that to the point uh, I should, uh, no, I should my point, it. no, my point is this. Uh, all I've been in it is this. Uh, I told them that the, the budget we sent up was what I stood behind, what I recommended, what I believe in. The uh, the people on the hill uh, off the record know that I feel very kindly toward uh, the neighborhood youth corps and that I don't get upset when they recognize what it's done. I've submitted my budget. I don't want to go beyond that budget on this or anything else. I can't consistently when I'm cutting three billion out of it. I don't want to go beyond it. The question is whether within it we should uh, we, we're free to uh, reshuffle. Well, uh, I let them reshuffle up on the hill without fussing about it. Now, is there some contemplated what what's happened? Is the Senate I, reshuffling you out no, of business? No. Oh no, I've got nothing to lose, and uh, and the, the fact of having something to gain isn't the principle. Thing. I think if we really want to stay within the billion seven, the way to do it is to do some reshuffling, and that if we don't do that reshuffling, then one or the other of them is going to carry us above it, or the Senate will carry us above it. Do you see what I mean? Yes. I think, I think we, by doing a little uh, reshuffling, uh, I could uh, I could get pretty complete concurrence with uh, with the. the well, I won't fuss at what you do. Matter of fact, if you want to know my whole feeling. Uh, uh, in a very short time, I would rather you and uh, some of these folks uh, uh, handle things than uh, some of the other things that take place around here. And I, I've, uh, I have got, and I've got commitments of the House people. They'll stay by uh, the House figure. I don't know what uh, the Senate will do. I would guess that they might run way over it if, because they just want me to impound it, and that makes it embarrassing for a socially conscious president to hold up any poverty fund. This is exactly the other part. I frankly, it's between 300 million and 496 in neighborhood youth corps. That's a secondary matter. Uh, my point is, Mr. President, I think the one way to get them all to stay within the billion seven is to do enough uh, uh, shuffling around within it that we can satisfy the demands of those who want to uh, go on up. Well, I'll try to do whatever you think's wise without saying the president ordered this right. so I can well, I'll do what I can. Maybe. But you just do what you think's best in the, in 
in the general interest without getting me involved, without forcing me into it, because I have to deny it. But I'm for my budget as it went up, and I'm going to stand on it. And I'm not going to go above the billion seven fifty. I gave them two hundred fifty million, and I'll give them twice that much if I get out of Vietnam. But I can't deny a soldier, and it's hell for me to carry on both of them. Well, if, if I can, if I can try to get some reshuffling in it. Uh, yeah, it, it, it Meany, I think, might give you a little support. He told me last night that uh, he didn't think we ought to go wild on education and poverty right now because we'd run it all, and we're going to have a backlash on that that's going to be worse than the backlash on the Negro if we're not awfully careful because they're telling me that. We've got it, and I think that action the other day on maximum feasible participation by the House was a mistake for this very reason. And they, you know, they killed it one time, the House did, and, and they'll kill it again. You see, uh, Bill, yesterday I had 11 governors. Uh, do you know you know how many governors that group were for this administration? One. And you know who he was? Nelson Rockefeller. Uh, the other 10 were just up in arms. This goddamn fellow from Florida who got beat, he was just raising hell about uh, minimum wages. Uh, the next one was raising hell about something else. South Dakota was raising hell about inflation through minimum wages and hurting the farmer. Others were raising hell about labor unions. Then the Negro question. And uh, Paul Johnson is the most reasonable man there from Mississippi. The only guy that really stood up and said, well, we can do both, and we've got to do both, and we've got to have social s s security in this country, and we've got this Nelson Rockefeller. The other ten I would have to put against me, and that was real frightening. Now, uh, Bobby and Teddy and Wayne Morris don't understand that. And uh, maybe they're a whole lot more popular in the country than we are. But I know this. I know we're going to have a Republican governor in Georgia. We're going to have a Republican governor in Alabama. We're going to likely, uh, E.R. Wallace, be just as bad. We're going to have a Republican governor. Already got one, really, in Louisiana. We're going to have a, a, a Republican governor in Georgia. There's Georgia, Florida, Alabama, Louisiana. And I don't know how poor Johnson can stand up to it. He told me yesterday he got 70 letters a day threatening to kill him. And uh, he called Nick Katzen back the day before and told Nick that he just wanted to tell Nick he's awfully grateful for the way he'd handled Mississippi. And if it hadn't been for Nick Katzen back there, they impeached him. But uh, Nick had 